Our CA Hoops Summer School Series presented by Soda Bank continues today as we have the head coach of the Delaware Blue Hens, Natasha Adair. Coach, thank you so much for taking time to join us. First of all, how, how are you doing and those in your family and your inner circle during the coronavirus pandemic? Well, Bobby, thank you. Um, we're doing great, you know, and, and as best as we can. Everyone's well. Everyone's healthy. Uh, we, are, we are learning to manage, you know, but I will tell you we are wearing our masks. Um, we are taking all precautions, and um, we're, we're making the best out of it. You know, this is an opportunity for us to either get better, right, or just really hang on to the adversity of what we're experiencing. And, and I'll tell you, we're just finding different ways. Um, I will say, you know, I haven't, and this is probably unfortunately, you know, I haven't had this much time at home, you know, as a coach. And so it's great for my daughter and I, it's great for my fiance and I, and, and it's funny, I say, you know, if, if we can get through this, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to be smooth sailing. Um, but even with the team, I, I will say we've learned so much about each other. Uh, in this moment and just trying to find creative ways and through courageous conversations, through just fun times. So it's just trying to, as a coach, you're always, what, three plays ahead and, and thinking about making adjustments. And so that's all this is. And, and I'm just thankful that my family's doing well. We all are doing well. And, and um, we're hoping to get through this. Well, Coach, speaking of fun times throughout this, uh, on the brighter side, of, you know, looking at the brighter side that you've already have of this pandemic, what have you been doing during this extended break that you usually probably don't have? I mean, has there been a favorite Netflix series or a book you've read or oh, all God. the family time? I mean, Netflix series, I, I think we've gone through so many, All American, Last Chance You. Uh, Ozark. I mean, God, I'm trying to think of them all. Um, Designated Survivor, Bobby. That was my show. Well, first and foremost, I don't know if you remember Jack Bauer, right? From 24. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, again, there's a whole nother Keith Sutherland, you know, type of uh, a guy that I, I just, I love. So anything that he's in is going to be really, really good. But um, so yeah, just found some Netflix time and, and uh, just finished watching. Um, this one wasn't on Netflix. I think it was Disney Plus with my daughter. We watched Hamilton, and it was awesome, you know. And and so just finding those moments to kind of hit the pause button, if you will. Uh, but even fun times with the players. We have we did an Easter egg hunt via Zoom. Pretty creative. We have done Pictionary. And that was interesting, to, to say the least. Uh, and Coach A's team has won every time. I just, I'm not bragging, but I'm putting it out there. Um, what else did we do? We played Taboo most recently. Coach A's team won. You know, it's just stay with the winning team. And um, so just really finding time. And, and, you know, we kind of touched on this before we even got going. My daughter plays volleyball. I don't know if this was fun for her. But it was pretty, and it was highly entertaining for me. I am trying to help her uh, work on her volleyball game. And um, I don't know if I'm helping. So anyone out there that, that's listening <laughs> that wants to come over with a mask on and, and just, you know, knows the game, please come. I'm, I'm calling out any volunteers. But just spending quality time, Bobby, you know, it, it's this, you know, I'm not making light of the pandemic and I'm not making light of the uncertainty. But what I am proud of is this family time and time with my loved ones and, and, and just time to reflect, um, time to have conversations that you probably wouldn't have, you, you know, or just made time to do things that you would have put to the side. And so family time and, and everyone who knows me knows my family is, is so important. Um, my children, my son who just graduated uh, from Johnson C. Smith, he's down in Charlotte and I'm yelling at him every day to make sure he has his mask on. But just being able to have these moments um, with them has been, been really special for me. And, and so I'm thankful. Books, I have books sitting right next to me. I mean, I have, I mean, Relentless, you know, read this one. Um, this is a really good one, Confessions of an Imperfect Coach. Uh, it's some really good stuff. We actually took an exercise out of here and did it with the team called, um, we call it the Hen's Hot Seat. 
And basically, you talk about a hero, a hardship, and a highlight in your life. And I'm telling you, you learn more about each other in these moments, but it also lets you know you're more alike than you're different. And um, it, it builds trust. You know, you can be vulnerable in this group. It, it's a safe space. And so, again, so many things that, that we're discovering and we're learning uh, along this journey and during this time. So. Coach, it looks like you use this pandemic to the maximum or both just as a coach and as a, <laughs> as a parent and right. a family member. So it's great to see that you can make light of, you know, such a tough time right now as we all can. And, and, and yeah. Coach, let's talk a, talk a little bit about basketball, some of the challenges you've had, you've had to face with uh, the COVID-19 virus. Well, obviously, Bobby, challenges are, are just not being with your group. You, you know, the way that our season ended um, in March, you know, March 12th was the day where we were getting ready to take the court and, and kind of we talk about the tournament as a new season. So we were so pumped and you know, you got five seniors, you're ready to send them out the right way. We were, we were getting healthy. I mean, it just seemed like we were clicking on all cylinders and for it to abruptly end the way that it did. Um, who knew when we got off that bus, when we returned to Newark, that we weren't going to see each other even to this date. Um, we had to have a banquet via Zoom. We've had to have conversations via Zoom. And, and so, you know, my, my, promise is when this is over we will reconnect even with that senior group and we will send them out the right way the blue hens way um but now as we prepare for the new season you know freshmen right they are ready to graduate high school and they're calling and they're pumped and they have their you know freshman check-in list and they're ready to go and we've kind of had to put a lot of that on pause and so right now I will say that the players have responded beautifully as best as they can. Uh, but I think that is an attribute to our leaders, our president, our administration, of course, Christy Raywalk, our AD, with conversation and communication around everything that's going on. So full transparency. So it's allowed us to keep the players in the loop. It's allowed us to keep their parents in the loop and even explaining to them when we don't have answers. Right. There are things that we don't know, but this is what we do know. And are, just who are we going to be coming out of it? And so I think the more we can challenge them to continue to be better, um, to continue working on the things that they can control um, and, and understanding that everyone is dealing with this. But we want to figure out how we're going to be stronger as a group. And, and so um, I, I'm just thankful for the leadership to be able to help navigate through this as best as we can. Absolutely. And coach talking about navigating through this right now, as you navigate the days ahead and the weeks ahead and the months ahead, uh, what is the plan for your team right now? Have you been able to either watch them in workouts or, or is there workouts planned in the future? What, it, what is kind of the agenda <laughs> for your team? I know it's probably hard to <laughs> say right now, but you know, it's, well, um, so what we had in, in the summer were phases uh, as far as return to, to campus. And so we were, we were able to have a couple of student athletes join in phase one and phase two. For us, phase three, when the majority of our players were to return, including freshmen, was halted. And, and not because there was anything detrimental that happened. You know, our AD, is, she's such a forward thinker. She says she wants it to be right. You know, she doesn't want to try to figure it out along the way to a certain extent, but she wants it to be right. And, and um, just being able to hold it kind of gave some parents a, a little bit of ease. Um, some of the freshmen who had these questions and a lot of it is around campus housing. A lot of it is around things that when campus is closed, right, you want to make sure there are other resources for your student athletes not just thinking solely about basketball. How are they going to move around campus? Our cafeteria is open. You know, in the event something, you know, does happen, are the, the necessary people there um, to help them in those situations? So we, we decided as a university, I'm sure, to hold that part. So half of the players are there, half of the players aren't. Now, what I will tell you is the coaches have not been there. So we, I've not been in the gym with the team. So what they are currently doing uh, is just conditioning, and they are able to do some just really minimal drills, ball handling, fundamental drills, shooting, 
but they aren't allowed to be in, uh, you know, a large group. They are, they started kind of two in the gym, one on each side. Now they progress to about four with, you know, one trainer, one, you know, one, one athletic trainer. And so just, I mean, it is baby steps right now. And uh, so for the ones that are there, they're chomping at the bit. They're ready. They're like, coach, can we go one-on-one? Can we go two-on-two? We're ready to, we're ready to fall out. The players that are sitting at home talking to them, watching this happen are like, coach, you got to be kidding me. So, but they understand. Um, what I love is the, the sense of that they're hungry right now, you know, and, and it, I tell you when basketball is, or, or any sport is, is able to continue, you're going to see a different fight. You're going to see a different hunger um, from all of these student athletes. Because, you know, we always say in that old wise tale, you never know, you know, you know tomorrow's never promised. Well, we're, we're living it. And so I think just the passion, the love, the respect for the game, you're going to really see them evolve um, in, in how they return and, and just what they give on that court and, and how they commit. So uh, half are on, half are off. Uh, we have not been, the coaching staff has not been in the gym with them. Um, and right now they're just doing, you know, a lot of fundamental work uh, until we can all return. Well, speaking of returning, Coach, how will, uh, when you guys do return, what type of team do you think you'll be looking at compared to last year's team as you guys get ready for the season? Yeah, well, I'm telling you, I, I am really excited to see it all kind of come together. Um, our freshmen, <laughs> I don't know which one right now is, is going to have the biggest impact, but. Um, I know that they are going to have some sort of impact early. Uh, Ty Skinner right now, I mean, she's just, she's a gamer, you know, and I, I have, I compare her to a lot of my, to some of my former players, but this is a kid that's fearless. This is a kid that can score anywhere on the floor. Um, you know, we started pressing a little more last year because we had just more, I, I would say more personnel that could do so consistently. And, and she's going to continue to help with that on the defensive end. But on the offensive side of the ball, you want the ball in our hands. I mean, she is just absolutely fearless, high basketball IQ. Um, she's the gamer. You know, she lives for those moments, that, those big shots and big moments. And so, you know, our league loves that. And uh, we're really excited about that. Tara Cousins, kid out of uh, – player out of Washington, D.C., another one. She can shoot the crap out of the ball. And I absolutely love it. You know, I, I think we had put something on Twitter the other day, and my hashtag was let it fly. Um, because, but she's a worker. Uh, I, I really like her dedication to the game. Another high IQ kid, uh, but just so passionate, you, you know. Mara Tejador, she's uh, from Spain. Uh, and, and just her international experience, um, I think is really going to open the floor for us. I'm, I'm really excited about how we are going to play on the perimeter. Uh, another, another player that can put the ball in the basket. You kind of see where I'm going here. Um, we have Jadea Reed from Canada and uh, played on the, the Canadian team and, and really played with some high level players. And she was uh, a wing for them, really can get to the rim, can, can really, her mid range, right? Can really shorten the game up and, and, but just another defender, really long arms as a guard. But what I love most about these incoming freshmen, they are, they're so pumped. I mean, they're calling every day and, and and they i love the fact of how they are excited to be with their teammates you know they're always in their group chat they're always talking and um you know they talk okay they're hype they talk a lot of trash i'm like all oh, you guys better back it up you know uh but just the camaraderie of this group that has not been together yet but is really intentional about that about our culture about our bond um but from a basketball standpoint the, the four freshmen are really talented and I'm excited to see how it all meshes. Um, we have a transfer, Jewel Small. So she's from Western Carolina, uh, native, you know, out of Georgia, player of the year uh, down at Western. And again, another person that knows how to put the ball in the basket and just a fearless competitor. So having her in the gym uh, competing night in and night out, I think that's just going to continue to push uh, her other teammates that are currently on the floor. Um, now the returners, you know, Jasmine Dickey, uh, you've seen her develop, 
year after year after year. And right now she has this, it's shark week, right? She is on the hunt and I'm telling you, she's ready. And what I'm most proud of, even during this quarantine, this pandemic, you know, she has really taken on a leadership role um, and, and really making sure her and, and Lizzie O'Leary are, you know, one of our seniors, they're kind of, they're the voice. Um, they're the voice right now for the team. They're the voice for social justice. Um, they, they've really taken on that, you know what, we're, we're going to make sure we're the leaders and, and they're going to be able to follow us along the way. Um, Paris McBride. Um, Paris has flourished. Again, another player, I would say, towards the end of the year, you could kind of see the light bulb come on. You know, and it was almost like, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to ball out. I'm not going to worry about anything. And I'm like, yes, that's the right way to think about it. And just during this time, I think a lot of the social justice issues have really helped our players find their voice uh, and find their confidence. And, and so I'm really proud. Um, but I can go up and down the list. T Johnson. I mean, T is electric. She's still electric. She's electric over Zoom everywhere she is. Um, she brings this energy, and um, I think for her, going into her senior year, having you know come in as a transfer, gone through different situations, you can just see her have her kind of aha moment, like it's time. And uh, I hope she has that that senior year, um, just kind of let it all come together for her. But um, she's another one that gives so much great energy uh, for our group. And two players that I am waiting to see in action, transfers, um, excuse me, Ty Battle uh, and China Latimer. Uh, China transferred in from GW. Ty Battle came in from Indiana State. Those two are the X factor. Um, they can flat out play, Bobby. They're good. You know, Ty Battle, again, crafty big. Um, footwork's phenomenal. Ability to score inside and out. And China is a wing and we call her a bucket. And she, she's the one, those are the two on the practice squad all year that talked the most trash, you know, and, and it, was, it was highly entertaining. So again, I mean, I hope I didn't leave anybody out, but it's, it's just so many moving parts. It won't be one dominant, like we've seen with, with our program over the years, kind of with Nicole and Anabosi just around her. You will see more of, of a team aspect and, um, you know, just some, them all really working hard and competing. We're going to open the floor more, um, kind of do, you know, do, do a little dribble drive and kind of create some scenarios where our guards can go to work. Um, but we're, we're still going to play defense. And we, we want to get up. We want to harass the people. We want to make it fun and competitive. I, I want to get back into the, to the 70s and, and, and put some points on the board. But uh, I'm really looking forward to the energy. You know, that, that's going to be a big word for, for our program, and we, we're going to bring it. We're going to bring it night in and night out. Excellent. Coach, thank you so much for the insight on your team and, and here with head coach of Delaware Blue Hens, Natasha Adair. And, and Coach, you, you alluded to it a little bit about your players and their voice, mm -hmm. the social uh, justice movement. Uh, what have you said to your team and your student-athletes and uh, things and things that y'all might have been – either discussing or doing in regards to the social injustice, move, injustice movement? Mm -hmm. Well, again, it, it all started kind of around the murder of George Floyd, you know, and, and at that point, one of my assistant coaches, Michaela Walker, you know, said, coach, I, you know, we all need to get together and um, get together obviously means organize a Zoom. But when we did, you know, there were two questions because you never know what to say. You never know. Again, there's, there's no right or wrong thing to say, but you know that your team is emotional in, in a lot of ways and so and has feelings about what, what just happened. And so I asked him, and I told him, I said, there are two questions. Uh, respond in, in the chat. And I just said, how are you feeling? And these were, this was probably four days after the murder. Um, and there were a lot of emotions expressed. It was anger, confusion, disappointment. Uh, uncertainty and then I said the next question was what do you need from your coaching staff and then what do you need from each other and it was love and support love and support love and support and there was one player who said direction and at that point you you know as a leader okay this is affecting them and we have to figure a way to help 
And so we talked about how we can take what we were feeling and turn that into action. Because again, there were schools obviously that were going to put out statements and there were things that were going to be pretty standard across the board, but we wanted to do something very intentional. And one of my, uh, my freshmen, Tara Cousins said, coach, I don't want this to just fade away. You know, there are people that are going to do something for the next week or two, and then it's going to fade away. How can we take action? One, I was excited because the freshman spoke up the way that she did. Uh, but two, she's right. And, and so what we did, uh, they actually came together and they wrote, they decided to write letters to all of the mayors in the state of Delaware. And they wrote letters and, and in their letter, it was around police reform. Uh, police training, de-escalation training, banning the chokehold, uh, body cams, you know, just different things. And, and where I was really excited was they had to do the research to figure out what to ask, to figure out that all police officers in the state of Delaware do not wear body cams. Um, they had to figure out, you know, just, okay, what were the in, in initial um, initiatives that they were going to get around and, and do the research behind that. Uh, the training, you know, and so when they put the letter together, I sent that letter to our AD, Chrissy Raywa, and she said, you know what, let's take this a step further. Let's not get this letter lost on a desk. The size of our state, we can reach out and touch people. And so she, you know, with the help of some of our on-campus government officials, we got in front of the governor, Carney, and we got in, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, in front of uh, the attorney general and when i tell you our players they were like kids in the candy store they they were so excited that this came to fruition who knew that they were a letter was going to turn into now a meeting one face-to-face -face meeting and then one uh, zoom meeting about change and after the meeting there was an executive order written to ban chokeholds and so that, and, and the attorney general was so funny, Kathy Jennings said, this doesn't happen that fast. So don't think, you know, this is just how it works. Um, but just know that your voice matters. And so since then, we have taken this even, even further. We've started a, a, a task force. Um, and that kind of is split up between programs and policy. And we meet kind of bi-weekly. And since then, we've had some football players join. We've had a volleyball player join. We've had a swimmer join. And so now you have this 15 player student athlete task force with uh, support staff, with some government officials. And we're meeting about how we can continue to affect change in Delaware. Well, thank you so much, Coach, for sharing that with us. And hopefully that movement and the fight continues to happen and it stays at the forefront. And uh, also, thank you so much for sharing your insight with your team today and everything you've been doing during this pandemic. And, and you stay safe along with your team and your family. And thank you for joining us today. And uh, hopefully we see the Blue Hens out on the court sooner rather than later. I hope so, Bobby. We will. And you stay safe as well to you and your family. Thank you so much. Thank you.